Welcome once again to these Sunday meditations. Coming to you from St Andrew's Uniting Church here in Sunbury. As we continue to be a troubled by this pandemic, as the continuing cold makes our days quite miserable, as war continues in Ukraine, as fires burn fiercely in Europe, as rising costs challenge our budgets, we continue to set aside time to pray and to lift up our hearts in worship to our God. The God whom we know remains our constant companion, constantly renewing us in faith, hope and love as we walk daily in company with him. Welcome to this time of Sunday meditations. We come with our fears, our doubts, all our questions of our hearts to hear the words of peace, hope and joy that God speaks to us. It is in this place of discovery that we can come searching to find the one who has been looking for us. It is in this place of openness that we can come knocking to be embraced by the one whose heart is never locked. Let us pray. Oh God, our heavenly, holy parent, there are moments when we feel as though we are separated from you. Times where we have chosen our own agendas over you. As we gather to worship today, remind us that despite our wandering souls, you are still home to us. Thank you, nurturing God, for welcoming us into this space today. And we join our voices with the prayer of St. Richard of Chichester when he prayed, Dear God, for three things we pray. To love you more dearly, see you more clearly, and follow you more nearly every day. Thank you. 
John Vandelaar on his Sacred Eyes websites has this lovely poem or prayer called Relentless Love. Though we run hot and cold, fickle and changing in our faith, your love remains certain and constant. Though we grow tired and disillusioned, bored and distracted far too easily, your love stays true to the end. Though we allow our grief and anger to turn away from, turn us away from grace and mercy, your love refuses to let go. We praise and thank you, O God, for your relentless love, for its abundant availability, and for so flooding our lives with love that some must inevitably overflow and warm others with its touch. Amen. Another reading from Luke's Gospel this week, as we follow on from where we've been reading over the last few weeks, we come to chapter 11 on Luke's Gospel where we read, he was praying in a certain place, he being Jesus, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his perseverance, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? For the word in scripture, for the word among us, and for the word within us, we give thanks. And we sing a version of that prayer that comes to us from the wonderful community, the Warman community on the Tiwi Islands. Talk to 
us bread today. We believe your word, Father. We are your children. Give us bread today. We have done wrong. We are sorry. Teach us, Father, all about your word. We have done wrong. We are sorry. Teach us, Father, all about your word. Others have done wrong to us, and we are sorry for them, Father. Others have done wrong to us, and we are sorry for them, Father. Today, stop us from doing wrong, Father. Save us all from the evil one. Stop us from doing wrong, Father. Save us all. From These verses from Luke's Gospel reveal some interesting things about prayer that I thought we might reflect on together. Because I don't claim to be an expert on an expert prayer. I don't think any one of us are. Most of us struggle, don't we, to find the right words, the right silences in our prayer life. So perhaps we might do some learning together. We should perhaps begin by noting that Jesus made a practice of praying. That his disciples noticed such that they asked him to teach them to pray like he did. And what he offered them and us is a simple construct for our own prayer life. It begins with the beautifully intimate, our Father. Now certainly God has power over all things, yep. But don't rush over the power of that simple and inclusive word, our, our Father. And it reminds us that prayer is not a preserve for the professional prayer. There's nothing magical, nothing mysterious about good prayer. It's actually quite a simple thing, as is evidence when it goes on in admirable directness to say, give us, forgive us, lead us, and protect us. It's really that simple. But having given us such a beautifully simple <coughs> but catch-all construct for our prey, Luke immediately goes on to give us two striking images to underline the certainty of God's response to our prayer. It might sound in the first instance to be saying that we need to wear God down by frenetic, persistent nagging. To get God to do things God really doesn't want to do. But what kind of a God would that be? That would be akin to giving in to the best lobbyist, which is what the politicians do. But that is not a God that would inspire me or win my affection and loyalty, I've got to say. And this is not about a nagging God. Not nagging God to wear down his resistance and do things against his better judgment. 
There is something else going on here. The Greek word that is used in the story is actually stronger than mere persistence. It suggests a kind of shameless, impudent boldness to this persistence. But it's not an impudence required to wear God down. It's almost as though our parent God wants us to be brash, impudent children in our asking. The form of prayer Jesus gave us begins by naming God as our parent. God is not our enemy to be feared. God is an not an abusive parent to be feared. Actually, the message here is the approachability of God. What it is telling us is that we can be coming and talking to God about our needs all day long, all night long, even at midnight if it's something that's keeping us awake at night. And know that God is always there, always paying attention. <clears throat> It's been said that the most interesting thing about a postage stamp is the persistence with which it sticks to its job. Well, the same can be said of God. And it is that stickability of God, by way of contrast with the neighbour in this story, that is being pointed to here. God does not count that as an imposition. God loves us. Our God is not ignorant of what we need. We may not know what we need, but God does. That's why we are invited to pray. Give us each day our daily bread. Now that's where the persistence comes in. Into our being prepared to talk with our God each day about what is going on in our lives. That's not saying come to church once a week and have someone, a professional prayer, say some prayers on our behalf. This is our talking constantly with our loving parent about what is causing us joy, what is, cause, is concerning us. Bread in this setting stands for far more than a meal on the table at the end of the day which it might well have been for those disciples who were following Jesus around the countryside. But bread stands for any of our needs, a job, our health, good relationships, peace, whatever. Note how this prayer doesn't spell out specifics because they will change over time. We may even be ignorant of exactly what it is we really need. But God isn't ignorant of what we need. Again, we are invited to go to God at any time, however importune that time might seem, and bear our souls to God. Now that's not wearing God down. God loves us sharing our hearts and our thoughts. Someone even equated that to being like pillow talk between two lovers. I recall a parishioner in my first placement having real trouble singing that hymn, Jeju, lover of my soul. She found that creepy and just too much. But don't doubt for a moment that God really does love us. More than that, he even likes us and just loves it when we share our most intimate moments of joy or pain with him. One of the things I love about the Psalms is the healthy, robust relationship with God that they give voice to. The Psalmists were totally unafraid of asking God hard questions and expecting answers. 
That's the kind of impudence that Jesus was inviting us to bring to our prayer life. That is what real faith was inviting. What real faith in a real God dealing with real issues feels like and looks like. Not the fluffy, gentle Jesus, meek and mild guff that we were perhaps taught to pray as children. If there is only insipid obeisance in our prayer life and none of the robust dialogue that we find, for example, in the Psalms, then we miss out on the relationship that is offered to us with our God. We may be creatures, but we are not doormats when it comes to God's relationship with us. The kind of robustness in our prayers, uh, this kind of robustness, it, that's what prevents our faith from going stale and dry. Our faith, if we don't think about it and exercise it, can often feel like just a muddling through. If there's no discipline to it and no intentionality about it, our faith can soon become something that is very surface, without deep roots. Look at the number of trees that fall over after a very wet periods, and you know how dangerous that is. When roots are not put down deep. You would never say that about the psalmists. I find their robustness a real challenge and a real inspiration to be serious about my own faith. What the psalmists really longed for that we might share with them was the reassurance of hearing God's voice. That intimate, up close and personal connection with the Almighty which is where the Lord's Prayer commences. As it invites us into that deeply intimate and vital connection with our holy parent God. And here perhaps we might think back to the Hosea reading, if you want to read that section that's set down for today. It's in the opening chapter of the book of Hosea. In any time of spiritual dryness and tiredness on our part, we are reminded of God's abundant and overflowing and gracious response. We can come to God with our worries, with our woes, but they are not the last word. They are not the last word. The last word belongs with God and God will revitalize us. God will restore us. For God's word to us again and again is to turn and turn again until at last we encounter God and then walk with God as we pray, lead us God into your kingdom ways. You see, prayer is not merely a passive exercise of piety. It can have passion. It can have pointedness. It can have persistence. Robust, impudent, daring persistence in our yearning to be partners with God in God's transformative mission in the world. And if we get frustrated that all we seem to hear when we pray is silence, remember, the first language of God is silence. God's voice is the sound of sheer silence. If we recall the story of Elijah in his hidey hole up on that mountain running away from his problems when God came to meet him. We can also learn that language of silence. Listen.
we might, we can learn to listen. So these verses invite us to reflect on our prayer life. It's a lesson we keep learning. We must always ask, Lord, teach us to pray. In the asking and the listening is also the doing and the sharing and the putting into practice. For this is all prayer. Amen. Jesus said to his followers, The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They are full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Reveal who you are. Set the world right. Set the world right. Do what's best as above, so below. Do what's best as ever, as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us forgiven with you and others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You can do anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. You're ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now it's your turn. Yes, yes, yes. People of God, as we come to prayer, let us remember that we do not have to twist the arm of a reluctant God to seek good things for this world, nor find ways to persuade a distant God to come near and listen to us. Let us remember that as we pray, we kneel alongside Jesus Christ in the presence of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray.
Eternal God, we may only see our small corner of this earth. But you see the whole expanse of countless universes. In our world fraught with fear and violence and greed, we pray that darkness is driven out by the light of compassion, of open-handedness and of peace. Let these not be mere words we pray, but words we put into action through our support of causes and charities and individuals who make it their mission to be the light bearers in every dark place. We pray today for the healers who practice their gentleness in every hurt place of heart and soul and body, where the encouraging word and the unflinching compassion brings hope like a cleansing flame into every wound. We pray today for the teachers whose gift of thinking and words enrich our mind and help us grow and develop and mature. Especially today, we thank you for those who taught us to pray, who formed the ideas and the rhythms and cadences that to this day give texture, colour and shape to the relationship we have with you, our living God. We thank you and pray for our country's leaders and all who are called to be the decision makers in our society at every level for politicians and economists, for artists and scientists, for farmers and business owners, for those who provide our energy and secure our safety. We pray for our natural world in its beauty and fragility, the astonishing resources and the unsustainable demands we make on them. As we seek to form a new relationship with you, our God, and with our sisters and brothers, let us also seek to form a new relationship with this earth we call our home, nurturing it, tending it, stewarding its beauty and its energy, not only for ourselves, but also for the generations still to come. And we bring to mind now those people who are in need of our prayers, those who are ill or anxious, those who are lonely or sad, those who are despairing or defeated, those who are hungry or homeless, those whose relationships are breaking apart, those who are bullied or abused, those who cannot find work, those who are overworked. And in silence now we make our own specific prayers for those on our hearts and on our minds today. O oh, holy God, so much to pray for, one prayer is not enough. So may our pledge this day be to offer new prayers each morning, each night, as we revel in your presence, humble ourselves in your mercy, and strengthen ourselves in your love. We pray through Christ our Saviour and Lord. Amen. Well, thank you for joining this time of Sunday Meditations again. I hope you've been able to hear through my croaky voice. I'll leave you with this blessing. Into every relationship that is dear to us, into every relationship that is hard for us, may God send health and steadiness and hopefulness modelled upon the relationship in which our loving God holds us. I commend you to the persistent, generous, living love of God to bless the world in every deed. May God bless you richly in the coming week. Peace be with you.